Whispers of the Lost The Cry in the Night In a quiet suburb known as Willow Creek, a series of unexplained events begins to unravel the tranquility of the community. Night after night, the residents are disturbed by the eerie sound of a child crying. This isn't just any cry, it's filled with such sorrow and despair that it chills those who hear it to the bone. The source of this lamentation is a ghostly apparition of a little girl, seen wandering the streets, her clothes tattered, from an era long past. The residents of Willow Creek start to share their experiences, each more unsettling than the last. Some talk of sudden cold drafts in their homes, lights flickering without reason, and a few even speak of feeling a small, cold hand clutching theirs in the darkness. The community, once close-knit and peaceful, now finds itself grappling with fear and sleepless nights. A local historian, Mr. Thomas, intrigued by these supernatural occurrences, decides to investigate the town's history. He discovers that during a devastating plague centuries ago, a young girl named Abigail had lost her parents to the illness. In the wake of their death, Abigail wandered the streets in search of them until she too succumbed to the plague, dying alone and inconsolable. It appears her spirit is unable to find rest, trapped in an endless search for her lost parents. Mr. Thomas's research leads him to a shocking discovery. Buried within ancient texts and forgotten lore, he finds a reference to a ritual that claims to appease restless spirits. However, this ritual comes with a dire requirement. A living soul must willingly take the place of the tormented spirit to grant it eternal peace. The revelation of this ritual presents a moral dilemma that shakes the core of the Willow Creek community. Debate ensues among the residents. Some view the ritual as a necessary solution to end their torment and restore peace to their lives. Others are horrified at the thought of such a sacrifice, questioning the morality and consequences of such an act. The nightly crying, however, grows more intense, more despairing, pushing the community to its limits. Eventually, driven by desperation, the town collectively agrees to proceed with the ritual. On a designated night, under a shrouded moon, the community gathers in solemn silence. An elderly man, terminally ill and resigned to his fate, steps forward as the volunteer for the ritual. He is embraced and thanked by many, regarded as a savior who is about to deliver the town from its haunting. The ritual is a blend of ancient incantations, the burning of rare herbs, and symbolic gestures meant to bridge the realms of the living and the dead. As the ritual reaches its culmination, a palpable change fills the air, a mix of relief and profound sadness. The elderly man collapses, his sacrifice complete. At that moment, the spectral figure of Abigail appears. Her expression, one of eternal sadness, slowly shifts to one of tranquility and understanding. With a final glance that seems to convey gratitude and sorrow, her spirit fades away, leaving behind a silent night. In the aftermath, Willow Creek finds itself enveloped in a haunting silence. The crying has ceased, and peace has seemingly returned. Yet, the sacrifice leaves an indelible mark on the soul of the community. Houses feel emptier, conversations quieter, as residents grapple with the moral weight of their decision. The story of Willow Creek and the little girl named Abigail becomes a whispered legend, a chilling reminder of the lengths to which humanity will go to find peace and the profound cost it bears. <laughs>
Over the years, numerous urban explorers, thrill-seekers, and paranormal investigators have ventured into the hospital, drawn by tales of Sister Agatha's ghost. She appears to them, garbed in her old, faded nurse's uniform, her expression somber. To some, she whispers dire health warnings, accurately predicting illnesses yet to manifest. To others, she offers comfort, guiding the souls of those who passed away within the hospital's walls to the afterlife. Unbeknownst to the living, Ravenswood Hospital had become a thin place, a portal between the living world and the afterlife. Sister Agatha, bound to this place by her unresolved grief and guilt over the lives lost under her care, had transformed into a sinister guardian of this gateway. As more individuals ventured into the hospital, lured by the mystery of Sister Agatha, they began to experience strange, unexplainable phenomena. Time seemed to distort, rooms shifted and changed, and hallways stretched into infinity. Those who encountered Sister Agatha and heeded her warnings found themselves trapped, unable to leave the hospital. They wandered the corridors in a limbo state, plagued by perpetual sickness and hallucinations of their worst fears and memories. Their souls, ensnared by Sister Agatha's influence, added to the hospital's haunted ambience, their moans and cries echoing through the decayed wards. The climax of this tale occurs when a group of paranormal investigators decides to unravel the mystery of Ravenswood Hospital. Led by the skeptical yet open-minded Dr. Helena Moore, the team ventures into the hospital, equipped with cameras and recording devices, intending to communicate with Sister Agatha's spirit and uncover the truth. As they delve deeper into the hospital, they begin to experience its harrowing effects. Members of the team start to see visions of their deceased loved ones, feel inexplicable ailments, and lose their sense of direction. Dr. Moore, through her recordings, captures Sister Agatha's voice, revealing the hospital's true nature as a portal and her role as its keeper. In a desperate bid to escape, Dr. Moore and her team confront Sister Agatha, begging her to release the trapped souls. Sister Agatha, in a moment of lucidity, realizes the extent of her actions. She had become what she once fought against, a harbinger of illness and death. With this realization, Sister Agatha releases the trapped souls, including her own, allowing them to move on to the afterlife. The hospital, its purpose served, collapses into ruins, sealing the portal forever. The story ends with Dr. Moore reflecting on the experience, her skepticism shaken. Ravenswood Hospital now lies in ruins, but the echoes of its past continue to resonate in the minds of those who witnessed its final moments. The town of Ravenswood, once overshadowed by the hospital's ominous presence, begins to heal, its residents finding closure as the legend of Sister Agatha and her haunted hospital fades into history. The Haunting of Hangman's Bridge In the small, sleepy town of Eldridge Hollow, an old, weathered bridge known as Hangman's Bridge casts a long, ominous shadow over the town's history. Constructed in the early 18th century, it was the site of numerous executions, most notoriously the hanging of Thomas Mallory, an innocent man accused of witchcraft. Over the years, the bridge has become the center of eerie local lore. Residents and travelers on foggy nights report seeing a shadowy figure wandering near the bridge. This specter is believed to be the restless spirit of Thomas Mallory, wrongly executed and now trapped in a liminal space between life and death. Local legend holds that Thomas's spirit is seeking justice, longing to clear his name and find peace. But as some curious souls have come to discover, the truth is far more sinister. The bridge, as it turns out, is a threshold to a dark, spectral world. A dimension where the souls of the executed are trapped, reliving their final moments in a never-ending loop of despair and torment. Thomas, rather than being a victim of this curse, is its warden. His role as the guardian of the gateway was a sentence passed down as part of his wrongful execution, a cruel twist of fate binding him to the bridge. On foggy nights, when the veil between worlds grows thin, 
Thomas's shadowy form becomes visible to the living. Driven by a dark compulsion, he lures the curious and the sympathetic towards the bridge. Those who venture too close, entranced by his spectral presence or driven by a desire to uncover the truth, find themselves crossing an unseen threshold. Once they step onto the bridge, they are transported to the spectral world. Here, the environment is a ghastly echo of Eldridge Hollow's past, shrouded in perpetual twilight and filled with the anguished spirits of those executed. The air is thick with the cries of the damned, and the landscape is a twisted reflection of the town, distorted by suffering and injustice. In this realm, the trapped souls are unaware of their endless torment, each reliving their execution over and over. The newcomers, however, retain their consciousness and quickly realize the horror of their situation. They are forced to witness the relentless cycle of executions, feeling the weight of despair and hopelessness that saturates this place. As the story reaches its climax, a group of modern-day investigators, drawn to the mystery of Hangman's Bridge, uncovers the truth about Thomas Mallory's role as the Guardian. In a desperate bid to free the souls and close the gateway, they confront Thomas's spirit. However, their efforts are in vain. The curse that binds Thomas is too strong, his role as Guardian too deeply entwined with the bridge itself. The story ends with the investigators barely escaping back to their world, forever changed by their harrowing experience. Hangman's Bridge remains standing, its true nature known to only a few. Thomas Mallory continues his eternal vigil, his figure disappearing into the mist, waiting for the next foggy night to fulfill his grim duty as the guardian of the damned.